Hey guys, a few weeks ago I bought a Corsair X, did a quick video to kind of give you a first look at it. This is the helmet here. I thought today, since it's been a few weeks now that I've been riding with this helmet, I'd do a quick video to kind of give you my, uh, my overall feelings. Call it a mini review at this point of the Arai Corsair X. So yeah, I've had this helmet now for a few weeks. I've ridden it on uh, various types of day trips under different conditions, dry, wet, hot, hotter, even hotter, almost hotter than hell on a couple of days. And I thought I would do a video to kind of give you a review of this and how it's been performing um, some strengths, some pros to the helmet. Probably not any cons, because you know, not to let the cat out of the bag, but it's a damn good helmet. Um, I'm not gonna cover this stuff in any particular order, but you know, the first thing that, that um, really hit me with this helmet was the amount of airflow that you get through the Corsair X. There are um, a lot of vents, a lot of venting on this helmet. Uh, it starts with the primary vents across the top of the helmet. There, there are three vents that are independently operated uh, from each other. There also, um, to go along with those, are two exhaust vents out the back that you can open and close um, independently of each other. And they have different positions. There's a half open and then a uh, full close, half open, open, then full open. There's also an exhaust piece on the bottom that pulls the ambient air from the, the helmet uh, out the back, down towards the back of your neck. Two of the coolest vents on here, um, no pun intended, are the brow vents. They're right above the visor and they open, you can do a half open or a full open. They open at an angle for a half open. There's a lot of air that gets pulled through these. There's also a couple of channels uh, that are formed by the lining inside right around here on the, uh, kind of in alignment with those brow vents that pulls the air back this way. Um, a ton of air, there's a ton of air through here and, and I didn't realize how much air came through the brow vents until I got caught in a rainstorm and forgot that I had these open. And after a few minutes, I had water dripping down off my, uh, my forehead inside the helmet because the water was actually going straight through the, uh, the holes here since it was coming at a at kind of a direct angle. Uh, but they do push a lot of air. There's also a chin vent here. It opens two positions. It opens to the shield or to your face. I tend to keep this one closed when I'm recording because I have the uh, GoPro equipment that sets right in front of that so it blocks the air anyway. But I also don't want the, uh, the wind noise uh, coming in. So you get a ton of, of airflow. And what's really odd is you would think with that much air coming through this helmet, this helmet would be loud as all hell. It's not, it's a very quiet helmet. When I say quiet, obviously that's relatively speaking because you still do hear uh, noise, but it's less wind noise on this than on my Defiant X. A shit ton less noise than on my old Bell Bullet. I think that Bell Bullet probably is the noisiest helmet out there, but it just, the air's just like coming up all over the place, especially from the bottom. You don't have that um, with the Corsair X. Because as you'll see on the bottom here, there's a pretty hefty uh, chin pad that's removable. Uh, I'm not going to be removing anything from this helmet because it took me a while to get all my uh, wiring and everything in right where I wanted it inside the helmet uh, for recording. So I'm not going to take this out. But uh, it does just shift over uh, to one side and then pull out, but it blocks a lot of air. There's also inside here a chin spoiler that, that pulls down inside of here, makes it a little more aerodynamic. So that cuts a lot of that wind from coming up underneath the helmet and thus a lot of the noise there. There's also a pretty beefy chin curtain here. As you can see, this is also removable if you don't want to want to leave it in there. But that that whole system underneath here provides a really good seal uh, around your neck. You know, it's going to fit a little tighter, a little more snug around your head, uh, and it's also going to give you a lot more neck support. But anyway, so super quiet, 
a ton of airflow. Uh, I don't even hear a lot of noise coming off uh, from my, my comms unit over here. Um, I know I've had people have, have people have asked me about that, or even asked me, can you put a comms unit on a Corsair X? You absolutely can. This outer ring here is is rubber, um, and it will, f and you can slide a uh, Senna or a Cardo uh, right right up underneath there, and get it attached to the the helmet. Another question I get about comms units are. Uh, regarding the speakers, and I've seen a lot of people talking on the forums and elsewhere about the fact that you can't get good speakers inside uh, the Corsair X. In fact, I've seen a couple of people say, no way can you put the JBL 45 millimeter speakers in the Arai. I say bullshit. They're in here, they sound great. In fact, the audio coming from the Cardo system inside this helmet is, is amazing. It's crystal clear, uh, music sounds fantastic. Now they do fit. I, I think I know why some people have trouble getting them in and I'll go over that in just a second when I uh, talk about the cheat pad. The other piece on here, it's a very stable helmet. I've had this up. Um, typically I cruise the highways around 80. I've had it up to about 85 or so on the fat bob in a semi forward leaning position. The helmet is extremely stable. If you're riding on a sport bike or you're leaning in a more forward position, there's a spoiler on the back that pulls up to kind of give you more drag on the back of the helmet to, to help with the stability as well. I've never pulled it up, I just leave it there. I'm usually in about a three quarters uh, seating position when I'm riding the Fat Bob. And then sometimes if I get a little crazy, I'm more forward, but, but very stable, extremely stable helmet. The visor, the visor that I have on here is the uh, Vast V Pro Shade system that I took off my Defiant X. It transferred directly onto the Corsair X, so I didn't have to buy another one of those. This is a two-piece uh, shield. Out of the box, the Corsair X comes with a clear shield with a Max Vision pin lock. Uh, the Pro Shade system also takes the pin lock. If you haven't seen one of these uh, systems before on an Arai, it's 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 a rise answer to people like Shoei and others that make the flip down visors inside the helmet. Arai absolutely will not do that. They're steadfast in that. They don't want to do any modifications uh, to the inside of the shell for safety reasons. If you know anything about Arai, you know everything comes down to safety first. But what they did do is come up with this exterior solution, it's the Vast V Pro Shield. You have two pieces. The bottom piece is a clear visor, just like you would get um, with the one that comes out of the box. But the second piece is this shaded piece that goes up and down. This is, I think, the mirrored uh, that I have on here. I think you can get three different tents to this piece. Not sure, I should have looked that up. But the way it works is if you have it down, riding in a sunny day, it's gonna block the sun from coming down um, in your eyes. As it gets dark, if the weather gets bad, you can pull this up. It, goes, it will pull up into one, two, three different positions. And then you're just looking out through the clear piece at that point. I've had this up fully like this and have ridden at speeds of around 80 without any problems whatsoever. Uh, the helmet is still very stable. This isn't pulling up or jiggling or, or swishing around. It's a very solid piece. So you shouldn't have any worry about whether or not that's gonna be stable. It's a very good system. I've actually used this shield on my Defiant X for trips out to the Midwest and then the one that I did down to Louisville uh, last month and it works uh, extremely well. Comes in very handy, you don't have, so you don't have to carry two different shields with you or carry a clear shield and wear sunglasses. But if you do wear glasses, one of the things you should know about the Corsair X is right inside here, there are two channels for uh, the, the arms of your glasses. It's very easy to get glasses on and off with the, uh, they're right about there.
Now, I'm not gonna take this apart like I said, but it's really easy to disassemble and clean the, the internals of the helmet. I'll put a link in the description of this video to one that Arai Americas has published on YouTube that actually shows you how to break it all down. I don't wanna do that, like I said, because I've got all my gear set up in here. But I do want to show you, this is the pad from my Defiant X. One of the reasons that um, I really enjoy the Rye products is that you can customize the fit of the helmet to you. My head measures 59 millimeters, so I am right on that, that line between medium and large. Both the Corsair X as well as the Defiant X from Arai use the same outer shell for medium and large. That means that all you're dealing with at that point are the insides of the helmet with the padding and you can get the pads in different sizes. So a medium, uh, which this is a medium, as far as the, the pads will come with, I think they're 20, 20 millimeter uh, cheek pads. And these can be customized. Right now, this helmet's a little snug on me because it's not completely broken in. Once I get through the break-in period, I can then customize the size, or I can then customize the fit. If you pull the cover off the cheek pad, you'll see these little pieces of foam here in different layers, and these are five millimeter tear-offs. So you can tear the padding off of both the cheek pads to get uh, that perfect fit for, for your head inside the helmet. This is also the section where the speakers go. I believe the problem that the people are having that can't fit the JBL speakers is that there's a piece of foam that sets on top of here that's meant to be removed before you put the speaker uh, inside the, the little slot here inside the cheek pad. I gotta, I gotta assume those people aren't tearing that off because the 45 millimeter uh, speakers, like I said, do fit. So besides this, you can also customize the fit of uh, the other components inside the helmet, uh, the headpiece that kind of goes over the, the, um, the head webbing can be customized, you can loosen it, you can tighten it, and it has five millimeter tear offs on the, the pressure points. So you can get a really good custom fit with your eye. I love the fit on this, the finish is great. I think that's about it. I'm very happy with the helmet. It's like I said, it's a lot of airflow, more than I expected. It's quiet. It's a very stable helmet. Um, are you going to spend a little more on an Arai, and especially if you're looking at a Corsair X? Yeah, you are. You're going to spend more than you would on a on a medium, you know, level helmet. But I think, to me personally, the one piece of equipment that I see no reason whatsoever that you should compromise on uh, is, is your helmet. I mean, this is this is going to protect your head uh, in case not not just you not just even having a, an accident, running into a car, a car running into you. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it. I actually did a video. I you know fell off my bike in a parking lot. It happens. Going what a mile an hour. It happens, and if you look at my Bell Bullet, which I was wearing at the time, you'll see a little little mark on the, the back of the helmet um, where my head hit the, the asphalt. Um, you, you, know, you just can't put a price on safety, I don't think. And um, in that case, so, so spending a little more to, to get something like uh, an Arai, to me, is definitely worth it. If you have an intermediate oval head, this is made for you. If you're a little more round or you're really long, elongated, this may not fit because it's um, there's not a whole lot of room inside for fitting a square peg in a round hole, I guess. So anyway, that's kind of where my head is on this. Like I said, I've had it in all different kinds of conditions so far. It's performed really well. I'm very happy with it. It looks like a work of art. This is the Danny Pedroza Samurai 2. Graphic, it's an amazing graphic. I've had a lot of compliments on it when I'm out riding. It goes really well with the bike. Looks badass. Fat Bob looks badass, so you know, it's a great fit for the Fat Bob. So that's it. If you have any questions about the helmet, put them in the comments below. I'll definitely try to get an answer to you as quick as I can. Also, if you've not subscribed to the channel, you like Fat Bob content, you'd like to waste time watching silly videos on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the bell. We're getting really close to having a thousand subs. I think we're probably gonna hit it at this rate within the next month. 
And I've got a little special thing planned for a giveaway when we hit that 1,000 subscription point. Got to get that milestone. We can get there. Thanks, guys. You have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Peace.